So no matter which of the methodologies you choose, it's typically a process that you go through. And we found the process to be things like planning and reconnaissance. That's where you determine, go back one. Next slide. Oh. O W A S P. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Next slide. Okay. So, planning and reconnaissance. This is where, you know, you've got your target. You've been contracted by some company or your own company to go out and pen test their external or internal, and you start the planning of this. This is where you sit down and you look at the. It's the initial state. What is it you're trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? You put all the, the rules in place, terms of engagement with the customer, et cetera, and then you col start collecting information about your target network. Next one is the scanning and enumeration. This is where you actually start doing things that are active. This is where you go out and you start doing the data collection. You scan what ports are open. Tom showed you earlier a live CD, and really, there's a couple of us in the audience, I'm not sure how many of you did it, actually did an MMAP scan on there and found about 27 different services that were wide open on that uh, access point and that website that, and server that he had stood up running on his laptop. Then you get into gaining access and penetration. We're not going to get into that here. We are going to give you a little bit, but we're not really going to give you zero days or stuff like that. But there are things that you can do with Firefox to enable you to look and have a better idea and a better chance of successfully gaining access if in fact those services are exploitable. And then maintaining access and exploration. This is all part of the frameworks and the methodologies but not something we're going to address here. And then finally, covering your tracks. Uh, not going to touch that at all. Hopefully when you're doing this, you're doing this legally and uh, you have permission and you don't want to do any harm. That's the number one rule I have when I have to do these is I'll do no harm, I'll go as far as I can to prove that I could, but I'm not going to change or knock down any services intentionally. I want to uh, go into some of the specifics about uh, different ways of using the browser uh, first standalone. So we're talking about uh, just using your browser, you know, down, you could download Firefox no extensions and, and things you could do there. And the second one is website-based tools. So that's things that you could, places you can go, websites that are already out there to do these things. So again, and, and really both of these you could use any browser for. You could use Internet Explorer. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Um, Google Hacks, Johnny Long has talked for several years about the Google Hacks and they're, they're all out there. So I mean, it would be ris remiss of you not to use that in your test. Um, We'll, we'll give you example, three good examples, or what we found to be good examples of extensions or plugins that Firefox has out there. Um, Firefox has a front end for other tools like Metasploit and such like that. And then, you know, we're going to say, hey, here's 60 good extensions, and you're probably not going to want to load up 60 extensions in your browser because it's going to be a memory hog. But we'll, so we'll give you some ideas of how you can, how you can deal with that. So standalone, out of the box, you download Firefox 3.0.1 now out of the web, off the website. Um, out of the box, you're, you're, you're largely limited to you know, information gathering. And this, this makes sense because, like I said, you could use any browser to do this. Um, but there's a lot of stuff out there. And in penetration testing, the general, a general rule is the more information you can gather about your target, the better your chances are of exploiting that target. And how are you going to find that vulnerable service if, you, if you're not doing, if you're not looking out there? So who is searches out there, Sam Spade, DNS stuff, uh, Netcraft toolbar, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Edgar filings, a lot of people will, will forget to look in that stuff. Um, and then in using Google, you know, news groups. How many, net, how many network administrators have a problem with XYZ box and they go onto a news group and ask for people to help. They got a problem with, I got a problem with this device and I can't fix it. Well, 
if he's the network administrator for you know whatever corporation, now you know what devices they're using, and you haven't even done anything, and you know, and you may even know what vulnerabilities he has. I mean, so you know, and that this is all passive. You haven't even touched any any you know stuff that you're talking about now. So website-based tools again, not necessarily something you'd have to use Firefox for, but uh, website-based tools. Nmaps, you don't have Nmap on your computer, fine, just go, there's a website, Nmap Online, that you can use. Leak checkers and hosted hash crackers, and I'll talk about a few of these uh, directly. So here's, here's a site that I, uh, one example of a site that you may use, centralops.net. This has a whole bunch of tools, and I won't go into all the specifics, but you can do trace routes, pings, you know, all the tools that you could do from a command line you can do from a site like this. this so this is pretty cool. Um, and, and these are all free things that you can do. So if you're, you maybe, maybe you're you know, a, cr a command line cripple like I am and, and you, you need a GUI sometimes to, to get through the tool. Well, here you go. This is a great way to do it. Here you go, Nmap Online. So you, don't, you're, you get to your pen testing site and for whatever reason you, got, you need Nmap and you don't have it. Well, here you go, Nmap Online. Go to this website, type in your target, boom. Now, granted, you have a, pro a few problems here. Well, first of all, that's not my IP because I am using Tor. But you can customize the scan. You know, if you know the command line things you want to do here, uh, in the custom scan here. Set up whatever you want to do and scan it. You're going to get your results right there. So quick and easy way to use uh, an online tool if you don't have something that you need. What's that? Terms of service? Go read them before you, I mean, yeah. Right, and, and like we, and John mentioned to me, um, and we'll, we may talk about this a little later, you, um, Depending upon, you know, you, you're trying to disguise where you're coming from, Tor might be a good idea to use once you're doing active tests. Because, you know, if, if they know where you're coming from now, you've kind of given yourself away. So Tor is not a perfect solution, but in this case, it provides you with what you want. You're disguising your own identity. This, this is a good ex ex example of a tool that you might use uh, if you're doing, say, a, a vulnerability assessment, you're already on the inside and you're doing a vulnerability assessment. So this is kind of a, this Hacker Whacker, uh, GRC, or Gibson Research also has a, a leak, leak checker. This is going to look kind of from the inside and say, hey, you're vulnerable to this and this and that sort of thing. So something that's ne not necessarily going to work from a, a, you know, a, a black box type penetration test, but if you're on the inside doing a vulnerability assessment, something that you might want to consider. These are all examples of websites that have um, online hash crackers. So you, you, you've grabbed a um, whatever, MD5 or you know, your landman hash off of a website. You don't have your tables with you and you want to crack them. Post them on the website. You know, it may take a day or two, but uh, you may get the results back. And a caveat here now. If you're, do, if you're doing a penetration test, you may, you probably have signed some sort of non-disclosure agreement with your client that you're not going to reveal their data. Well, if you post their landman hashes or whatever on, on this website, it's pretty much publicly available now. Now, that doesn't say this hash is associated with this particular company, but you're still exposing their data to the web. So you be care, you want to be careful about using these sort of services. Here's a good example. If you're familiar with like SETI at home and all those distributed computing projects, this is a rainbow table distributing, pre or distributed computing project. So you sign up, it uses your CPU cycles when you're not using your computer, and you're basically helping them generate you know, large scale t rainbow tables for Landman or NTLM or what, you know, whatever you want to do, MD MD5 and such. So if this is, and, and again, they also have a, a submission tool here where you can submit a, submit a hash and get information back. So this is kind of cool stuff to use, stuff that's out there. You know, I'm at the site and I forgot my drive that has my tables on. You know, this may help you in that case. Uh, this is uh, Johnny Long's Google Hacking Database. Hasn't been updated in a few years. However, good examples, you know, 
you know, you don't necessarily need this website to show you everything, but this will give you a good